Look, Bannerlord when will win. We've got to beat ISO's Productions and his meme group here, you know. Artillery when, I mean, it's a decent meme, guys, but I don't think it can beat Bannerlord when. I mean, look at all these comments. Yeah, there's one or two of Artillery when's on my videos, but look at all these comments on ISO's Productions videos. Jesus Christ. Bannerlord when. Ba Bannerlord when. Now in today's video we're going through two different interviews, we're looking at them and I'm going through picking out the best parts. Now of course, like always, I want to quote my sources so make sure you click the link in the description to see the full interviews and get all the information and juicy information out possible and support the guys that actually got this information. Now first off we're looking into modding, we know we're going to be a lot more in depth with the Bannerlord modding and once again we're probably going to be seeing the modding on Steam Workshop. Armageddon said that 90% of every mod is, should be on Steam Workshop, which is nicer, it's a lot easier to integrate it in, so that is great. Also, they have said that not actually much is completely overhauling from Warband. They're keeping pretty much everything that they had in the game before, just implementing it better. Then, of course, adding the things on top. They're not really taking anything away from the first game. Now, our first bit of sad news here from Gamescom is that thought there might be some naval battles. They didn't mention that could be something that could happen, but there's not going to be any Anything like that on release. They want to put naval battles and sailing content in, but that's not something that they've got at the moment, and that's the same sort of thing with co op. They're going to try and put it in, but it won't be at release for definite. Now, we did mention that these things could be added in DLCs or future updates, so I guess it was kind of expected that we wouldn't get this straight away. But speaking of DLCs, they said that there's going to be some big plans for DLCs in the future. What DLCs would you like to see? Make sure you leave that down in the comments. Me personally, come on, let's just get an opinion on the wars back. I want to bring back the regiments. I want it now. Now, of course, they don't want to make any announcements at the moment because, of course, that sort of makes it a bit definite, but they might be going and looking into some, working with some GPU companies, such as NVIDIA or AMD, to see if they can actually optimize their game better for this. It's always nice when games partner with these GPU companies because it just makes a better experience for everyone if it runs a lot nicer. Talking about optimization, how will it run? This has been a question point. Yes, the predicted system requirements are on the Steam page at the moment, so you can go and check them out if you type them out. But do Lord on Steam, you can go and have a look at that. But Armageddon says that it will require a mid to high end PC for the later game, well at least mid-ish game. It won't run on really old computers, but even in the early game you might be able to get away with like a cheaper computer or maybe even a laptop if you're lucky, but it is a more intense game. That's just not going to happen if you're still working on a 7, 8 year old computer. This is 2018 or 2086 by the time it's released, you kind of probably want a bit better computer than your nan's old laptop. Now the interview keeps pushing for a release date of course as you would do, it keeps saying oh we're expecting it in 2019, it's not going to happen in 2019, maybe a beta might happen in 2019 but once again absolutely nothing anything on a release date so we're still waiting for that. But moving on we did hear a bit about the family system but they did say in one of the gameplay showcases that they might want to try and get it so you can play as your family in the future but we do see a little bit more about the family system in this interview. For example if you have a brother you'll also be able to have him command your parties below you in the whole commanding system and of course if you also go on campaign you'll also be able to order your brother or your families to be able to hold the forts and defend your land while you're away killing peasants or sarenids as they're so called in this game. You can also use a lot of siege tools and engines when it comes to actually taking over these castles such as siege towers that we had in Warband. Ladders are still going to be in there as we saw in the gameplay videos but there's also going to be things like catapults and trebuchets. Yes, we can have trebuchets. By the way, by the way, did you know that a trebuchet can launch a 90 kilogram stone over 300 meters? Just, just saying. Just saying. Moving on, you can order your soldiers to actually use these artillery pieces, but once again, we do know that you can take control of them yourself. Looking into the start of your campaign, what will happen when you're introduced into the single player? Well, we do know that there's a slight bit of storyline. Of course, the whole game's not based on a storyline. That will completely ruin the whole Mountain Blade franchise, where you're told to go off and do your own thing. You're able to create your own stories. But for the beginning of the game, introducing you into it, it'll show you all the kingdoms, some of the mechanics and all that good stuff to someone that's not really played it before. So it's great for more exciting accessibility for a wider audience, which I think it's safe to say this game is bringing in a massive audience <clears throat> views than Warband ever did. Going back a bit to family, there's been confirmed that you can definitely marry in the game a bit like in Warband, but this time you can actually have children. The time frame will be limited for sort of things. They said that 18 years is a bit too long in our game, which of course is when you become an adult, unless you're living like Saudi Arabia when it's about four that you become an adult. That, that's a joke by the way, I know someone's going to take that seriously. Um, I pray for your sense of humour if you think that is anything but a joke. Just, just had to confirm that. 
because I don't I don't want to get a hitman on me. Or maybe I do. What even is the point of life? Anymore? Now going on to companions. Once again, like in Warband, you're going to have these companions that can recruit from taverns and around the map. But the companions actually do a bit more than just sitting in your inventory, pretty much doing nothing. Coming onto the battlefield with very weak armor because you can't be bothered to upgrade them. Unless, of course, it's Jeremus. Can we, can we just have a moment of silence for Jeremus? The best companion to ever live, you beautiful, beautiful, bold headed monk. But you can assign different roles to your companions. For example, they said that you can assign like things like Scout or Quartermaster to have different skills. Yeah, you could skill them up in Warband, but this time you can actually assign them different roles to do different things. And once again, you can actually put them as governors in your castles and towns so they can actually organize it for you. So in case you have a massive empire, you can't really do all that stuff. If you're, if you're off, you know, bedding wenches, you need someone to actually make sure you've got enough butter in your pantries. But it will also improve the defense of your castles if you've got companion will it at the time if it's being attacked while you're not there. Companions can also be used to help craft weapons throughout the game as well, so that's something. And lastly, we talk a little bit about the character building. Of course, we've known a lot about character building. You can go and watch all the rest of the videos if you want to know about that, all the skills or the perks that you're able to do. They have said that they're trying to balance out the character building a lot more where it's a bit different to Warband, so it's a bit more realistic. You're not able to actually become a superhuman powerhouse where you just get all the skills and everything and you're able to destroy anyone. It's a bit more even than that. Even in the later later games it will still be possible for you to die like it would in real life so you're going to have to be a bit more strategic about where you put your points and perks on not just you but your companions and what troops you recruit further in the game so unfortunately there's no 1000 stat man for you i know let's have a moment of silence for 1000 stat man Jesus Christ, they're good videos though. But that is it for today's video on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Some good information here. I like it when we have these good, juicy bits of information that we can put together in videos. But it's been your boy Bannerlord Spam back at it again with another video. I probably don't have much more to talk about. Gamescon's over. They're probably not going to be releasing anything else, but who knows? Maybe we're going to get a release date in a folded letter through my letterbox someday soon. <laughs> I'm joking. Tail World's fucking hate me. But thank you guys for watching, and until then, I will see you in the next one. Thank you.